What's poppin'? It's your boy, Mike Powers. If you are not done so already, please subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell notification so you'll know every single time I drop. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Share this with your people. For my real hip-hop heads, today I present to you a true player from the Bronx. That's right. We've been upstate for a minute, but now we take it back to where everything started. The man on the left of your screen is an MC who's known for his smooth delivery, undeviated flow, unbothered demeanor, and universal respect from his immediate peers, and that is to say cats who actually matter. The man who also answers to the monocle, Pharaoh Dawn, has proven himself adept at the art of telling you what the game looked like without giving up the secrets to it. A quick YouTube search will do nothing but confirm the man's work ethic as that platform is broadly populated with his incredible output. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the Mike Power Show, I bring to you the latest heavy bar spitter to emerge from hip hop's Mecca. The Bronx's flyest street poet, the Mussolini is in the building. Poppin' Moose. I appreciate that, big bro. I appreciate you having me on the show, man. What's poppin', Mike Powers, man? I've been tapping in. I've been watching what you're doing for the culture. And just know we appreciate it, baby. That's why we here supporting, you feel me? Absolutely. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you dropping through. Every one of these is a big moment for me. These is cats who I'm on the couch watching YouTube and shit a pop up. And I'm amazed by the, the work ethic, the output, the, the acumen. And so everybody that slide through here is just a blessing for me. So thanks for coming through. How is your day going so far? It's going great, man. Just doing my, my daily routine. I just finished hitting the calisthenics, you know, a few pull-ups, push-ups. Just trying to stay fit out here, man. You feel me? Trying to look good out here. You feel me? I feel you. you would not be the first dude to come on here and shame me for my lack of exercise. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just, man. Hey, man, we just, we, I swear to God, we've been smashing Popeyes for the last three days. Yeah, you know I just mean? had one of them Popeye chickens for the first time on set. Some some video, I was doing some little acting and shit, and they had, it was all right, man. I I I I thought it was gonna be something like real crazy, man. I'll take I'll take a a, a chicken sandwich from Shake Shack any day over that Popeye. Ooh, I never had the Shake Shack joint. Now see, now my girl gonna make me drive with the Shake Shack. Yeah, man, chicken chip that 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 chicken sandwich from Shake Shack. I I take that over Popeye, man. Oh, we got to get Popeye. on it. You know, Popeye's right down the street, so we go down there. If we, I don't know how it is, <laughs> where Indeed. everybody else is at, that line at Popeye's be long as fuck all the time. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, so I just fucked around. She got the chicken sandwich. I got the fucking spicy chicken breast. You know what I mean? But we, her birthday about to be over with. Her birthday weekend about to be over with. We're going to get right back where we're supposed to be at. We're going to take... <laughs> we might go vegetarian after this shit, man. Hey, but, so my information is that you're from the Bronx. Um, That's correct, right? I was, yeah. I was born and raised in, in the Bronx and shit, but but I came up in, in the Washington Heights indictment uptown and shit. Like, like, like uh, I would say... I was in the Bronx maybe till maybe a good 12 years old. And so I was there until my pops had caught a case and he had got locked up when he had got caught, when he got, um, when he did, when he went to do his bed and shit, that's when I did the switch to Manhattan to Uptown. And I kind of learned the game and, and I started rapping and, and doing all kinds of shits in the streets when I moved over here to Uptown. So I, I'm from the Bronx. But I rep, you know, I rep New York City, man. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Wash Heights nigga. I'm a Uptown Dykeman nigga. You feel me? Man, first, you, I mean, you love uh, New York. You love New York because, I mean, one of your album covers, I'm not thinking of the right one. Is it MSG? Yup, MSG, with you, man. Times Square? It was, it was yeah, like MSG. The, yeah, the cartoon photo. And yeah. then you shot, I don't know how many videos you shot on Times Square. You shot at least one that I peeped out recently. Um... And you got a love for the city. I mean, that comes out in the in your videos. You you shoot a lot on location. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the flashy shit, the hood shit, all of that. Um, what's 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 it like for you growing up, uh, in a place like New York, the the mecca, and doing what you're doing right now? I'm I'm glad you peeped that because when I dropped the M um, people to this day still ask me like, what's the meaning of MSG? I'll be looking at people crazy like, if you from New York City and you just don't get that that's one of the staples or one of the meccas, like, you feel me? When you think of MSG, man, I think about the Knicks, man. I think about right. Charles Oakley slam, slapping slapping dudes left to right. I think about when you and Miss that fucking, that fucking layup, everything, you feel me? Just the whole essence, the culture 
of New York City. So that's why I named it MSG. You feel me? And um, yeah. I'm just a, I'm you know born and raised here. I love the city, man. And I feel like we need. I came up on those vibes. Like when I when I started listening to rap, man, it was real heavy. Dipset, G Unit had just was just coming out, and and pff, that wave. I'll never forget it. How it was in the city. Just it was real uptown and shit. It was real New York. It was almost like, you know, what, what the game was missing. And then when the whole shit went, like, you know, all trappy and south, I feel like that whole vibe and that whole feel went went with it. So I'm just trying to, you know, just trying to bring that Houston. shit back. You feel me? And, and this is where I'm at. And before I – let me let me say this first. It, when, if New York ain't popping, hip-hop ain't moving. That's my opinion. Like, shit's, shit's not going – something is out of, out of whack when New York is not getting that light shined on them. So, yes, of course. And when you talk about basketball and you talk about uh, MSG, um, and I don't know if this happened in MSG, but when you talk about the Knicks, let's not forget about John Starks dunking on the whole Bulls. Come on, man. I ain't want to say that because I, <laughs> I, I don't know if that happened in New York or, in, or wherever it happened. Right. But that's the feeling. That's what I'm thinking about when I, when I, when I titled the album msg it's like it's new york man i'm so i'm i had visions of when Starks was dunking on you know what i mean it's just that feeling man we just trying to bring the city back man yeah i might watch that clip like six times a year just on gp <laughs> it'll pop into my head like yo let me see that dunk one more time that's a mm -hmm. little ass dude going on the whole squad horace grant was under the rim jordan was there i think so i think uh who was that big black dude cunningham was his ass down there too i'm hey, not sure so um when did you start spitting? Yeah, I've been spitting, man. I've been spitting probably since I was 16. But I, it was just a hobby. It was just accessible to me. It was just like, you know, something that kind of just fell in my lap. So I never really took it serious. So, um, but I've been rapping on and off since like, like yeah, 16. All right. And you just dropped the, the fire ass single. Um, I posted on my IG, Halo. With Ransom, it seemed like I talk about Ransom in every interview I do. He seemed to be connected with everybody. Everybody connected with him. Shout to Ran. Hey, what was it like um, connecting with him? What was it like to do a joint with, with Ran? Yo, Ransom. Ransom a legend, first of all, man. Yes. Let's put that out there. That boy, he 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 legendary with the pen. He been legendary. But what I told Ransom is like, I came up watching him and Stack Bundles killing shit, you mm -hmm. feel me? Rest in peace, Stack Bundles. But yeah. that's one of my favorites, you feel me? Him, Max B, and I know Stack Bundles had a lot of respect for Ransom, and they used to do a lot of records together with that whole Desert Storm wave. So, yeah. you know, just to be able to work with him is like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, it was a good feeling. And then on top, when I sent him the record, I was going to I was gonna send him something else. And I was when I was um in the studio, my boy G4 Jag, I was, he was like, nah, you should send him this. This kind of feels like some shit Ransom would jump on. Shout out to my boy G4. So I sent him that track, and when he got it, he went crazy. Like, he told me straight up, Ransom told me straight up, word for word, he told me that's the first song somebody sent him that he wished it was his song. So Ooh. I was like, that's crazy, you feel me? I felt like that when I heard it come on. I'm just like, when I heard, first of all, I be all around the house and I can't do nothing but hear that fucking beat. The way does that beat do that to you? Is it got, is, is it like an earworm? It hit my Yeah. Shout out to Clip though, man. He's from the West Coast. He he had posted that shit on the gram like a throwaway beat. I'm like, bro, you crazy? This shit sound crazy. Send me that. He sent me that. And that's that's what came out that night when I was writing to that shit. You feel me? That was the vibe. And it's, it's one of them record. records, man, because I ain't going to lie. That's one of them records that people are just talking about right now. That I'm getting hit up like crazy. Um, so shout out to Ransom for, for being a real OG, a real big bro and tapping into the culture, you feel me? He's a, he told me he a fan, you feel me? So shit like that keeps us new niggas motivated to keep going, you feel me? Hey, that's why I put it on my page because really my reputation is based on the fact that when I recommend some shit to people that – um, when they click it, it's going to be fire. So I want people to trust what my opinion is. I don't like to really post iffy shit on my page. And uh, of course, up to the run up of this recording of this interview, I put it on my page. And sometimes I like to do that right before I interview somebody. If that's, if it's something hot that I think people should hear, but people should not get it twisted that that shit was not posted on my IG because I was about to interview this guy. When I heard it and I was sitting on the couch, that's the first thing I did. Like I didn't even listen to, ran part yet 
all the way. You know what I mean? I just was like, I, let me post this joint right now. People got to hear this. And of course, the feedback from the IG was was banana. So I know the more and more people that hear just even that particular joint, they're going to gravitate towards you more. And and people don't understand that. And I understood this uh, by my research. You got a lot of album cuts that are phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, some of the stuff that you actually don't shoot the videos for be the flamest shit, yo. Like, so, I mean, I appreciate the output, but I think um, I'm going to give you some recommendations on some videos you need to shoot because you got so, some flames on them albums, man. Um, you got the new joint called New Album, Return of the Oro. Word, that's my baby. That shit, that shit making hella noise right now. You feel me? I'm talking for, for a dude that got no sort of backing. I'm telling you, no management, no big homie, no budget no nothing i'm doing this shit just me and my team boston on records this shit is making some noise and i'm and i'm 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 feeling like all the love i'm real appreciative i, I appreciate the support and everybody just spreading the word and and it, the feedback just been crazy man i'm hyped i'm gonna keep it 100 with you i've been hyped for the last week since the drop you feel me so we just out here just working working the album and then also you know let that be a lesson to, to certain cats when you promoting your shit, I have a list of people that I'm either I already got lined up for interviews or people that I'm reaching out to right now, but I got a, a pretty full schedule. And I'm on IG one day and I follow you and I see when you post and I saw, I forget what the exact caption was, but whatever it was, it gave me the feeling like, man, this nigga serious right now. That's just a feeling like I said, yo, yo, move serious right now. And that's when I reached out and was like, yo. Let's sit down and talk, you know what I mean? It was just like that. Nah, yeah, definitely. It definitely was like a switch. Like I said, I wasn't taking this shit serious. Like how I'm taking it serious. Now, I told Special too, like maybe before I started turning up and all this shit, because Special was telling me to come around more. I was like, bro, I, I told him, yo, it's go time. I'm ready to kill niggas. And since, since then, I just been, I don't know, man. I just been on my shit. And then the quarantine shit, got niggas inside so ain't nothing else to do but work you feel me so yes. like who what you what you nobody should have an excuse right now so we just out here showcasing showcasing this music because i look at it like it might be a blessing in disguise because the, the lounges in the city and, and the clubs is, they just opening up but you, you know you can't really be inside turning up how you how you used to yeah so it's like now people want to hear just good music it's like i feel like and rap, these mainstream rappers ain't doing no shows either. So it's like we all right now basically playing on the same field right now. It's about the music, you feel me? So I'm just going hard, you feel me? Yeah, I appreciate that too. Hey, you, um, I really like the joint uh, Pick Your Poison with uh, Blast 89, uh, produced by 38 Special we was just talking about. Um, how far do you go back with Special? Uh, and what was your reaction when you first heard the beat for Pick Your Poison? Um... Special, I go back with special, like maybe a, we might be been, been working for about a year or two, if I'm not mistaken, and shit. Not too long. I met him through Thousand Words. Shout out to Thousand Words, the Polar Boy. God, man. That's and that legend. album y'all was on, that was that shit was sick. Yeah. Yeah, that shit was sick. You definitely need big, big bro, a legend. He got stories and he just, he's a young legend in the game. So you, you definitely need him on the show and shit. Um, but I met him through, um, through, through, through Thousand and shit. And then, um, Special had, had was doing a show um, at the Drone. I forgot what show it was. It was like he was on tour, and I think that was the last stop on the city and shit. And he was like, yo, Moose, you want to open up and shit? And I was like, yeah, why not? And shit, you feel me? So we went. We did our thing. That night was epic. There was a bunch of dope up-and-coming artists from the city, you know, specials, you know, showing love. And from there, we just built a relationship, and we just been working ever since, man, like, I just been peeping game. I feel like since I've been working with Special, I done step step my work ethic up a hundred percent. Just being around him and watching the way he work, you feel me, and the way yeah. he move is like I kind of you know blended that into my work ethic. So you know what I mean, shout out to Big Bro, Trust Army. This shit is is really moving. This Trust Army shit, you feel me? Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. You might not know. I did. I did an interview with Special. It's on this channel. Um, I think I might want to sit down and talk to a thousand words because people in the industry, especially cats from the East Coast, is saying like that's that dude right there. It's not much I know about him, but I do want to know more. Um, yeah, yeah, legend. Are you you are you the CEO of Boss Don Records? 
Yeah, Bull Stone Records, that's my shit. And my partner, um, Emilio Craig and shit. Um, shout out to my brother. He helped me run the label 100%. So, you know, just, just that's just the team. That's that's what we rapping right now, Bull Stone Records. You feel me? We we trying to be bosses uh, um, in life. And, and we fly. We feel like we young dons and shit. You know, we move like, like young bosses, young dumb, young dumb shit, you feel me? We just out here doing, making good music and really just trying to get to the money, you feel me? Are you looking to sign other artists? Do you have other artists in the stable or is this just an outlet for you at this point in time? Nah, I got a a, a, a bunch of dope artists. Like we about to put out, if, if whoever heard Return of the Auto, man, I got a few, a few. I always pick my features real strategic and shit, you feel me? Like, O Finesse out of, out of Colorado, he's real dope. You should tap into him. You know what I mean? His flow is crazy, and he be right, he be saying some shit. So I got him on the album. Um, I'm looking on, on you know, trying to fuck with him and, and do a whole project with him. Then my Pacific artist is, I got Izzy Hot on the album and shit. He's, yes. I, I came up with him uptown and shit. Izzy always been nice with the pen, you feel me? Yes. And, um... Me and him got a bunch of shit in the stash. Like, you know, he's my artist. Emilio Craig is on Boys Gone Records. He's crazy with the pen, too, you feel me? And he don't even, he's not even a rapper, you feel me? It's just he being around me in the studio all day. It's like, you know, once you, once you know how to ride a bike, it ain't nothing. You just right. pick the habit back up. So yeah. he was writing some shit, and we got, we got his project dropping. And then I got a bunch of dope production, dope, like, in-house producers. Shout out to Calico. You know, skinny white beats, Fuego, um, OMZ. This is a bunch, you know, all in house. You know, just bringing. We got a sound. That's what we're looking at it like. It's a certain sound that we're trying to bring. Oh, we we're gonna get. Here trying to, we're not out here trying to sound like nothing but us. You feel me? But balls gone. Yeah, we definitely gonna get into that sound. I just need to say something to the people out there that's watching this. Um, as it relates to Return of the Aura, I have to explain this to y'all. When you listen to this album, understand one thing, which was something that blew me away when I listened to this whole album all the way through. The it's motherfucker, moving. it builds momentum. The whole album, it seemed like every song get better and better and better. This album gets better as it goes along. By the time you get to the fucking end, you still listen to fucking bangers. But they just, they intensify. Um, so I just want to say that. That's like a recommendation from me. Y'all got to go check this album, Return of the Oro. This is not me kissing no ass. This ain't me dick riding. This is me listening to the fucking whole album and catching that feeling. Um, that's straight up. And let me get on my 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 fun questions, which is over here. Um, where you get the fly ass fucking colorful jackets and shirts from? I gotta know this. Uh, what which jackets? What you talking about? Man, you got all kind of like I forget. I'm not thinking of the the video right now. You got one video. Yeah, yeah. You got like a with the with the hood. Oh the, yeah yeah yeah. Nah, I mean. Like I be fucking with the independent brands, you know what I mean? Them, the, the the ones people ain't rocking or don't know that just look fly type shit, you feel me? And still cause, you know what I mean? Cause the same, you feel me? Yeah. I, I can't think of brands, but I do do a lot of online shopping, I ain't gonna lie. It's just different, um, you know, different companies and different brands I, I come across with. You know what I mean? I'll be like, if this shit flies, this, you know what I mean? Yeah, you gonna have to like DM me like some of them links because I need to get I need to get fly like you. That's like one of the first things I noticed when I watched the videos. God damn, this nigga be dripped like shit's crazy. And then okay. also, also I be timid about when I have artists on here. I be timid to ask motherfuckers about their motherfucking merch, but niggas need to start sending me their merch. I'm gonna help pro pro y'all shit too. You know what I mean? And I need some clothes. So Moose, I seen you got some merch. I was on your website. You know what I mean? I'm gonna need some of that Feral Dawn shit. You got the Feral Dawn on the back. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, need, yeah, I got you. You got to got you, you got to send me some of that shit. I need at least one hoodie, man. Um, got you. Got you. Uh, the the whole upstate, they seem to be uh, collabing with each other. But uh, uh, personally, for me, that's a great way to discover cats I wasn't hip to before. Um, to that end, you made uh, Scriptures in the Sky album, and I'm I know you not upstate, but um, you made Scriptures in the Sky album with G4 Jag. Uh, Shout out to the voice of God, by the way. Um, <laughs> why did y'all decide to do that project together? Um, G4, I met G4 at a trust event. We was having brunch, like, especially I took us out to some brunch and shit. And I don't know, man, we just clicked, man. I, I never was, I, I wasn't familiar, tapped in with G4 to that day and shit. And we just clicked in real life. 
And we did a few songs, and then next thing you know, G was like, yo, we should just do a whole tape. And honestly, as I as I kept listening to G, like, I was like, man, this nigga is nasty, yo. And then his voice is different. The motherfucker know how to make hooks, like, and he worked crazy. Like, he'll write a verse in five minutes, no lie. Like, that's my brother, you feel me? Shout out to the whole Fly family. True Stella Billy. Yeah, man, like, tap in. G4, me and G4 did that whole tape organically. And on top of that, we did every song together. Like, he ain't send me a verse. I ain't send him a verse. Nah, we was studio to studio together, Thank catching you. the five. Thank you. Get the fuck. This is for y'all niggas that's making collab projects. I'm not going to criticize on how y'all do it, but as a person that's been in the studio with artists before, get in the same room, man. It's no, it's no substitute for that fucking energy, man. Nah, it was crazy, bro. The energy of them nights was crazy. Like, I can't even... Like, I remember crashing scooters drunk before getting to the studio with my leg all bruised and coming out with two bangers. Like, them type of nights you don't get from, like, you know, sending each other emails and shit, you feel me? Plus, he's outside. He in New York City. He's right, you know, he's... he's I'm in the Heights, Bronx. He's right there. He, he in Harlem, you feel me? So it was nothing for us to do it and I feel like the city needed that it's been a while since the city like two cats from the city especially the fact that he got his own movement with Flea Lord and, and, and all that shit going on and then I got my own movement over here with Boys Gone for us just to be like fuck it let's just take shit over and drop some good music more, a, lot of, a lot of these rap niggas a lot of these rap niggas ain't you know what I mean they, they not moving like that they not trying to do shit like that they trying to hog all the light yeah. you know what I mean keep all the shine but you can't, you can't deny good music, and, and we're going to keep working until they, they put some respect on our names, you feel me? This was the thing that people got to understand, because if it wasn't for the fact that people was collabing so much, a lot of people, I wouldn't even, it would have took me longer time to get to know who people is. Now, I'm, I'm, I might turn on this dude's cut, and I hear this. Wait, who was it? This is how I uh, discovered um, you and Left Lane did on. Yo, um, Left Lane did on is nice. That's my guy. We got some shit together, too. I know I heard um, one cut that y'all had. Yeah, we got one cut. I don't even know how I came across Left Lane, but his he up right up my alley, man. Shout out to the Left Lane did on, man. He's definitely I, nice. I heard him on the Dump God joint, and he was I think he was the first voice that I heard on that whole project. I said, like, Who is this dude? Uh tapped in some more, and of course the catalog for from Lefty is is banging, but then you, I can't remember if it was on Thousand Words album the first time I heard you, or whether or not, I think it was Thousand Words, but he was also incredibly impressive on the Resurrected Pharaohs joint, Planet oh, yeah. Asia. Yeah, shout out to my boy Planet Asia, man. Every time Planet Asia comes to the city, man, he touched down with me, and we be running around the city getting crazy, you feel me? I got a whole product, I got a whole album with him, in the cut, actually, me and him, and we banged out. We just, you know, we just waiting for the right time and shit, you know, so that's my nah, brother. Nah, you should have never said that shit, because now niggas going to be blowing up both of y'all niggas. Like, drop that shit. We got we to gotta yeah. have that joint. We got to yeah. have that joint. That's crazy. Every time every time he comes to the city, we bang out a bunch of songs. So me and him just got a, got some shit in the cut. And, you know, that's big bro, man. He really fucked with me, too, organically, man. He, he told me. When he when he met me, he's like, my sound is gonna bring a balance to the game. He said, that's it. like he said, I'm like his words. He was like, I'm the East Coast Snoop Dogg is what he was telling me. I like that. I was trying to think of something like that last. You night. feel me? He was like, he was like, I'm gonna bring a certain balance that the game needs, and and that was cool for for somebody like Planet Asia to tell me that shit because that nigga's a legend. He done had several deals. He done been on big tours. He got respect. He done work with all the producers. I'm trying to work with. So for him to be fucking with me is, I mean, we got a whole album in the tuck, like I said, you feel me? That's big bro. Shout out to PA. Listen, and Planet Asia got it up here, man. He just, he's a, he's yeah, a he, thinker. So when somebody like PA come to you and say something, you say something like you about to bring balance to the game, man, that's like you got fucking knighted by somebody. And PA be all over the place. Every hood that nigga be in, man, he good wherever he fucking go. Like, mm -hmm. it be, I, I follow him in his IG, and when I'm on your IG, whenever you post something on it, I see PA always showing you that support. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's a, he's a real one, for sure. Um, he's, a, he's definitely a real one. That's a big bro, like I said, man. He's super supportive of what I'm doing over here. We chop it up, you know, and, and like you said, he's a, he's a smart dude. Like, 
I can't tell you how many ju- um, um, gems and jewels the, the brother done dropped on me or how much knowledge, you know what I mean? I done picked up just being around that nigga because he talked and he's always talking some shit. You feel me? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. shout out to you. Uh, the, the, the Return of the Oro, the name of the album. Can you break down that title for me? Yeah, man. Um, It's just a spinoff of, of um, the, the, the Return of the Mac, the movie. Um, yeah, okay. And, and and the name and you know the name Goldie and shit gold, you know what I mean? So I'm Spanish, I'm Dominican and shit. So I I just flipped it like instead of saying gold, I said auto, which you know, auto is gold in Spanish. You feel me? The return of the auto. Oh, of the got gold, you. you feel me? Got you. So so that's what it is, man. And I feel like it's been a crazy year, like, you know, with the whole COVID and the whole uh protesting, and I feel like you know, the summer hasn't been fun. You know, people not people need something, some some fly music to have summer fun, like that that summer feel that we used to in the city. You feel me? So yeah. that's why I was like, you know, it's time. It, the game needs it, so I dropped Return of the Order, and I feel like it's some of my best work. You feel me? From the production to the just the whole layout is real cinematic. It's, it's a vibe. You feel me? Um, and you dropped the song uh, Luxury Art. Well, I'm sorry, luxury and art, six years ago, right? So the subject matter is a bit different than what you spit about now. It's, to me, it's more of a pure hip-hop, uh, more of a boom-bap sound. Was there a shift in subject matter from that time to now? Can you explain that? Um, Not really. I mean, luxury art was one of those records, you feel me? It, you know what I mean? I've been talking my shit for a minute, you feel me? And... Um, luxury and art was just the that that was the vibe for that record. It fit yeah. everything. You feel me? And that's why you got that that type of. I go off like I'm not a rapper that goes to the studio prepared. I never mm. go to the studio prepared. I'm I want to hear what you got to play for me. Whatever catches captures me in the moment and inspires me to write. That's I go off that vibe. You feel me? So that was that was just the record that you know that type of shit. You know, shout out to my boy Pull Work. He's on that song too. Yeah, put work. Yes, I noticed that a few a few projects or for a few projects, uh, you went with the um, and I'm talking. I'm thinking I'm t- talking about singles and maybe not albums. One of them is an album, I believe. But you went with the ancient uh, Egyptian theme, uh, and one of the monikers is Pharaoh Dawn. So, what's the significance of the Egyptian symbolism? Pharaoh Dawn came about. Uh, really, shout out to my boy Greg and shit. Uh, he had. I was shopping around for um for artwork because the album was already done and shit. So I was just trying to figure out where I, I wanted to go with it art-wise because honestly, nowadays, that's real important, the presentation of how you put out, you know, your project. So, uh, you know, he sent me that shit. It was just like me with a little Henny bottle in Egyptian style. I was like, damn, this shit crazy. This shit just, this is it. And the back of it with the whole wolf slash Egyptian face slash smoke coming out. That was my boy Emilio Craig's idea. So, you know, we just did that. And so you got that on the hoodie? That that Pharaoh with the smoke coming yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you, bro. I got 3X. you. I got, 3X. I got you. <laughs> I need I got that. You. Hey, um, another fun one over here. Um, Frank's a Red Devil Hot Sauce. Say that again? Frank's or Red Devil Hot Sauce. Uh, Red Devil Hot Sauce. Yeah, man. <laughs> and you said you're Dominican. I don't. I yeah. mean, I don't know too many Dominicans in my, in my real life, but I know one famous Dominican is is his name Mero from Jesus and Mero. Do you know that cat? Uh, nah, not to be honest, not all the time. Man. But you know of him, do you? Say that again. Say his name again. Mero. You know Jesus and Mero. They used to be on um, Vice Land. They got the little. It's like a comedy commentary show. They started nah. on YouTube. They was on um, Vice, and then they got a Showtime deal. I probably, I probably heard of them, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna need, have to type in. Talk to rappers, though, man. You need to, and he, he, he down for the for the Dominican motherfucker. You gotta peep him out, holla at uh, Mero, and tell him to get you on the fucking show. That's Showtime right there, man. You need to hook yeah. up with him. I mean, yeah, link that up, man. I'm with it, man. You feel I'm gonna I'm 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 IG the nigga myself and let him yeah. know you need to talk to the Mussolini, Pharaoh Dawn. Hey, so what's going on in the boroughs? Um, I'm real heavy on Upstate right now, but I heard someone say that Upstate is doing more for the real shit than NYC. What's your perspective on that? 
Um, shout out to the whole upstate man, uh, and shout out to everybody just bringing that real shit. And honestly, they should feel like that. You feel me? They should feel like everybody got to get their respect, man. Everybody got to get, you know, what I mean, you got to pay homage. You feel me? I'm not the nigga over here, but you know, at the end of the day, there's talent everywhere, and, and it's just a matter. It took, it took upstate, you know, what I mean, to put a little bit more light on it. You feel me? So, and and now, as you can see, it's just it's emerging from all everywhere, from every city. You find the new underground niggas that's like, damn, I this shit could really come back. You feel me? As a whole, as a culture. So, but like, definitely, man, them them boys on the run, man. You gotta respect it. You gotta salute. You feel me? Real niggas salute. So shout out to shout out to everybody doing anything upstate. Yeah, and this go for motherfuckers that's really, especially from New York, from the boroughs. I just want to say this and be clear about it. Don't fucking hit me up asking about their interview shit if, like, three years ago, you was doing some shit that was sounding like down south snap music. Or if you was doing Chicago drill. Don't switch up the style now because these niggas done made it popping and then slide in my shit like, yo, I want the interview because I'm going to do my research and I'm not going to fuck with you. Only, only thoroughbred ass niggas is appearing on this platform. That's my word. Um, I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know if people still listen to the radio or not, but um, what's going on at Hot 97? Are they supporting the real New York street shit? Yeah, they supporting it. They not supporting Moose, you feel me? Now, let me take that back. Shout out to Ebro. Big bro Ebro, he he showed some love. He retweeted on, on the gram and shit. And, but they playing a lot of underground artists, but they, they not playing Moose. They need to tap the fuck in and wake up, you feel me? Because you know what I mean? We we putting in a lot of a lot of work and a lot of good music out here, but I see them slowly, you know, slowly playing here and there some underground shit. But you know, it's still not really that balance that we need. I don't listen to the radio anyways, but you know, on the late night, you might hear a few a few joints. You feel me? That we fuck with. You feel me? Yeah, Hot 97, let me say say this to y'all real quick. Y'all know y'all don't give a fuck about a nigga like Mike Powers, but if y'all niggas out there playing Doja Cat. You know, and, and blue face and this shit. And nigga, get, let's get Moose in rotation, man. What the fuck is the problem? Real talk. Yeah, man. You feel me? The city needs that, man. I feel like we, we, I'm trying to recreate this whole, that whole, you know, that whole vibe that we had when G Unit first came out yeah. or when Dipset came out or even, even now, you see, even how Griselda came out, like the game needed that shit. You feel me? And we need more of that shit. So, it takes OGs and people like Mike Powers and like Spash and like yeah. Ransom and like Planet Asia to co-sign the real shit when these niggas probably listening to it. They probably know who I am and listening to it and just don't want to give it up. You feel me? Just give it up. You feel me? Yeah. During my research, I noticed that you don't reveal too much of yourself personally online. Um, what's your thoughts on the concept of being a celebrity when everybody want to know your business, is that important for you to balance that? Yeah, man. I feel like my my own my clout on on social media is strictly off music. You feel me? So yeah. why would I just like I like my I like my privacy. I might post shit here and there just to let people know, you know, we we still human. You know, we still like to have fun and shit. But for the most part, like I just I just want to give people good music and just. My sound, I want to let that speak for me. So that's why I keep it real. You know, I keep my personal real low and just give the people what they want anyways because they just want the music anyways. You feel me? Yes. Um, you work with cats from all over the map. Um, obviously, Planet Asia, Spesh, Ransom, and so on. What's it like to be respected by those big names in the game? Man, it's good, bro. It's, it's like I said, it's motivational because sometimes – we all, whatever, whatever on path you choosing, whatever route you grinding for, sometimes you have them days where you just like, fuck this shit, man. This shit ain't moving fast enough or it ain't, you know what I mean? It, it might not be what I want to go all in on. You feel me at this? At, so when people like that reach out and they like salute you and want to work with you and you start building these relationships, it's like I went from the outside to the inside. And that's just alone, it's like, damn, nah, it's just like, I got to wake up and really take this shit serious because if people of this caliber is reaching down to me, bro, I got something that's worth gold and I got to really just go hard and make sure that the people see that too, you feel me? So 
that's why I'm just working at the pace I'm working at right now. You feel me? Because all this opportunities in the air, and I got, I don't need every cosign. Like I said, I don't need every cosign. I just need the real ones. You feel yeah. me? And the real ones is is fucking with me. You feel me? So it's all love, man. I ain't I ain't out here slacking. I'm out here just just staying on point, just staying prepared. And I just think that when I look at all the, the, the East Coast cast that's, that's dropped, the people I like, let's not get it twisted. The numbers for the clicks and the views, for me, they're not where they're supposed to be at. And I say this for Lefty. I say this for you. I say yeah, this for, uh, for other people sometimes, Planet Asia. And it's up to us, the people that love this music, which is why when I posted your shit, Halo, on my IG, what I said was, and I say this often, Go turn somebody else on to this right now. If it's, just, if it's just me, I tell another nigga and he like it. Now we just doubled that shit. So if a thousand motherfuckers like it, y'all turn some one person on to it. Nigga, that's you watching this video. That's your fucking job. God damn it. We're not going to just sit around here like, oh, we love it. Why these niggas always get the shine, but our dudes don't get the shine. It's us, man. It's us. Let's us put in the work. Again, this, this shit almost died before. We had this big-ass fucking drought. Now we got niggas bringing it back. This is our, our chance to take a hold of this shit and push it forward. We already saw what happened when we ain't jump on the ground properly last time, and that's my rant on that shit today. Um, what's your favorite all-time lyricist from the South? Currency. Uh, New Orleans in the building. He might be Baton Rouge. Um, West Coast. Shit, I mean, of course. Um, shit, I would have to say Pac on shit, Pac. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. And Chicago. Favorite lyricist from Chicago? Chicago? Um, shit. Off top, um, common sense is coming up to my head. You feel me? Oh yeah. He had a few. He had a few joints, man. Yeah, yeah. Me, I would have, shit. GLC is up there for me. I love me some okay. GLC. I don't know if he's dropping a lot of shit now. Uh, it's GLC is a nigga you got to really go search for his shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he got a he had a song called Momentum. Y'all go check out Momentum by GLC. That shit raw. Uh. <laughs> that nigga said, my pimp is mind controlling. Please don't let me get at Oprah. Like, <laughs> and I know you talk that pimp shit, so you could appreciate I could that. appreciate the shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm hey, what's the studio session look like for you? Is your crew in there? What we doing? Yeah, it just depends on the night, man, or what studio we in and shit, man. So, but I, 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 I do the Dolly session sometimes, and just me and the engineer, and then some nights it's just me and the whole crew is in there. But we always got, we always need some good marijuana, you know what I mean? Some good trees to blow. Yeah. You know, occasionally we might have, you know, some, I'm a frozen like type of tropical type of nigga, you feel me? Yeah. So we in the hood, in the heights, you could come get them frozen nutcrackers and them frozen pina coladas and oh. all type of shit, you feel me? Honey coladas. So we be in, this, in the studio just getting right and shit, you feel me? Yeah. Oh, that's what's up then. Um. Yeah. And so when you talk about you need the, the, the right medicine with you in the studio, my dude, my plug tried to hit me up. I'm a, I don't, <laughs> I need to get my money up, right? But I told this dude I'm staying right here. For a zip, I'm staying at two. I don't know what y'all doing out there, but I'm staying at two. He hit me up yesterday out of nowhere. He like, yo, I got this fly shit from China. And he showed me the pictures of the shit. And he like, the price just went up. He said 225. I said, look, yo, then hit me up when you get back down to two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I can't do it. I don't know. Can you, if you can know somebody, get me, get me the plug for the two. Holler at me. 